All right, first letter that I'm going to answer is from B.D., his actual initials, from Bloomfield, New Mexico. All right, and I'm going to get everything out of the thing that he sent here. Um, sent a couple different things. Uh, little, um, neat little booklet thing that he made here. Um, Caution, judgment, judgment after death, judgment seat of Christ. Just different kind of like a little topical thing there. If you can see that. And uh, just kind of a neat little way to study the Bible. And there's so many different things that you can do. You know, deception, poor choices, pride. Um, you know, again, little things that you can do like this with your computer. Print stuff out. Get it laminated like this. Make the little edge binding thing. Um, there's different types of things that you can get that'll do that edge binding. Uh, I do actually have some of that myself. Um, don't see any examples of them laying around here. Uh, but yeah, really neat little thing here. Um, and introduction to salvation, judgment. He's he says, I, I plan to, to add this to the front of the scripture guide. Wasn't sure if I should write word for word or paraphrase. I tried word for word. Um, so another thing here, introduction to salvation, judgment. If you can see that, you know. So more scriptures. Not going to go over all of that. Um, what is hell? Is it all that bad? How can one escape hell? There's, I mean, there, brethren, there's so much stuff that you can do like this. That's really, really a good idea. Um, you don't have to just say, you know, other ministries should print up this stuff or whatever. You know, let's look for somebody to bring these things out. Um, so, okay, let me put that off to the side there. I'm trying to find what all has been written here. Okay, that actually is a letter that got mixed in this one. Um, okay. Uh, dear Brian Denlinger, hello Brian. Hope all is well. I can say I have been blessed. Thank you for your service to our Lord. I have been uh, brainstorming on how to improve on them. Uh, this is what I have now. I'm hoping I can make it simple to follow, like a tract that can lead someone getting saved. You know, he's talking about this little thing here that he made, which is really neat. I noticed in one of your videos that you turned a semi-trailer into an office. Looks like a good idea. Last I saw, you were trying to figure out the insulation. I know you work hard and are not afraid of determination. Uh, well, you know, determination is kind of a necessary ingredient when you live off-grid. Um, and I'm not afraid of determination. And we're actually standing in one of the trailers right now, so... Um, as I was writing this, I got into a serious conversation with a dear friend of mine. He says he has been having a hard time sleeping. He says it seems something is trying to pull him away. Um, it's when he is in a deep sleep. Almost sounds to me like lucid dreaming, but not intentional. All I could think to do is to tell him to pray, ask Jesus for spiritual protection, and read the Bible. I gave him a King James Bible some time back, and today I have advised him to read the red letters in one of the Gospels. I figured it to be a good start. I got to a private place and prayed for him. I feel like I'm missing something. I know there is power in prayer. I hope I did well in what I did. I believe that he simply needs to commit his life to Jesus. I feel like I missed something. Please feel free to critique me on my actions. I told him if he doesn't have Jesus, he has no protection against spiritual attacks. Exactly. I never had to deal with this, thank God. When he told me this, I, the thought of it scared me. I'm not sure I did well in, what's, in what I said to him. I do know that prayer and reading God's word is always good, though. If I may ask you to pray for him, his name is, and then he gives the name, um, first and last initials there, J and B. I'm looking forward to sending you another scripture guide in the future when I get the format more befitting for a lost person to read and get saved.
Thank you again for rightly dividing the Word of God in dispensation. From your brother in Christ, BD. Um, well, as far as the thing of sleep, okay, there's a number of factors there. Okay, if your friend is, you know, there's with Bible believing Christianity, you're dealing with physical as well as spiritual. Um, Paul doesn't just all just uh, be healed, you know, like with Timothy. Um, he says to him, you know, use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine often infirmities. That's a secular bit of advice. It's nutritional health. So with when you understand the Bible, you understand God is a God of science. There's no scientific truth out there that is apart from God. Okay, if it's true, it will tie back to God, to Jesus Christ, in other words. There is no, like I said, there's no truth out there that's not, you know, tied to God somehow. So um, there is nutritional advice that you have to think about because it could be something just as simple as that. If he's not saved, then that is, a, you know, he needs to get saved. We'll get back to that here in a minute. But nutritional advice, bad sleep can be caused by too much screen time right before you go to bed. Okay, if you're on the computer, watching television, whatever else, the blue screen will trigger your brain into thinking, you know, it's daytime or whatever else, the blue light there, and that comes off of a television or computer screen or even your cell phone, whatever else type of thing. You need to stay away from that. I have a video on the thing of getting proper sleep, and that's a big part of it. Um, reading the Bible before he goes to bed is going to help him. Um, so I would start there, the nutritional thing. Um, the spiritual, okay, getting into some of the spiritual. Uh, I know people will put these, these uh, Native American dream things. I forget what they call them things. Dream catcher. Dream catcher. Thank you. Uh, dream catcher. They, you know, they look like a, almost like a spider web, like they'll have feathers hanging off the bottom and then they, they have like the little web thing and whatever else and like a little ring. Bad, real bad. Um, they're a cult. And actually, I think that they can conjure, you know, devil spirits, kind of like a doorway for devils, so to speak. Bad. Um, you don't want to have any kind of a shamanistic, you know, thing that will help you sleep better or crystals. You know, that's another thing. It's popular with New Agers and things. Um, you know, even certain types of candles, if you're burning incense and whatever, like you get these Catholic candles, you know, the different saints and you light the candle and, uh, you know, if your friend's messing with any of that stuff, bad news. That's spiritual, but also kind of a physical thing there. Um, proper nutrition is another issue. Um, is he near a smart meter? Um, you know, again, we, when we were living at our place in Bridgewater, Literally, where our bed was downstairs, it was originally upstairs, we moved it downstairs, and about six feet away from my feet on the other side of the wall, the outside of the wall, was where the smart meter was. Led to a lot of sleep problems. So um, there is there is that stuff there that you have to think about. Um, now, salvation is obviously the most important thing. If you're not part of the body of Christ, if he's not born again, then he has no protection from the spiritual realm. You say, well, he did get saved. He is definitely a Christian. Okay, fine. Um, you go through all the checklists. You say, okay, I'm, I'm not watching the wicked stuff, or, or not wicked stuff, but anything, really. Don't watch video before you go to bed. Um, my nutrition is good. I'm not near a smart meter. Uh, you know, and you go down through the list and you say, but I still am having weird dreams and kind of weird things. Um, well, um, another thing that you can do as far as fighting that spiritual stuff at night, we've done it before, is get Alexander Scorby readings of the King James Bible and just turn it down low enough that you can hear it, but it's not going to keep you awake. And then let it play all night. Just get like a little MP3 player or whatever with the speakers and don't put headphones on. That's not going to be good for your sleep, especially have a cord going down, you know. Not too good if you roll around at night, end up choking yourself. Um, but that's another thing that we've done in the past, and it does help uh, fight the spiritual realm and things. And, you know, there's times that you're just going to get attacked in your dreams, and I don't even understand all of that stuff. Um, you know, it happens to me almost on a nightly basis. So, you know, you just pray and you just say, okay, Lord, sorry about that dream. I don't even know where that came from. Um, Help me to forget that. And uh, I've gotten to the point where the attacks, the spiritual attacks that come against me are kind of an encouragement. You know, I'm getting kind of weird enough that I'm starting to like it in some ways because it just helps me to know I'm effective. So 
Uh, but yeah, make sure that your friend is saved because that's the biggest, most important thing. Um, because Lord, you know, can make somebody like that afraid, feel fear if, you know, they're going to end up in hell. They need to, you know, like the amazing grace, you know, it was, it was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. You know, you're supposed to fear God. So if he's not saved, then he has a reason to fear. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that answers your question. We're going to go on to the next letter.